Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at the Emax Nighthawk 250 quadcopter. This budget mini quad comes with almost everything you're going to need to get going, including a carbon fibre frame, speed controllers, motors, propellers and even a flight controller. So let's get one out of the box and start building it. So let's get started on building this budget mini quadcopter. This kit comes with the Emax 2204-2300KV motors. These come in clockwise and counterclockwise. Here we have a set of counterclockwise and clockwise carbon fibre 6 inch propellers. The flight controller included in this kit is the CC3D Open Pilot. The kit also comes with 12 amp Simon series ESCs. In the box you'll find your screws and spacers as well as the carbon fibre 250 frame. You're going to need a power distribution board, I'll put a link in the description to these. All that this board does is distribute the power from the battery to all the speed controllers. Measure up where you want to place the speed controllers and then cut the red and black wires accordingly. Once cut to length, solder the black to the negative and the red to the positive on the power distribution board. Repeat the process until you have all four of your ESCs on the power distribution board. You can see here how the power distribution board and ESCs will fit onto this plate. This will be underneath the quadcopter. Find this bag of screws and then add them to the plate. Then using the small bag of spacers, screw the spacers onto these screws. This will hold them in place. Because carbon fibre is conductive, you will want to wrap something around the power distribution board. Here I'm using tape. You can also use liquid tape. Now place the arms onto the frame. Then you can fit your ESCs and power distribution board in between. Take the CC3D flight controller out the bag and add the nylon standoffs. You can now screw the flight controller onto the bottom plate. Make sure you have the flight controller pointing in the right direction. You'll know this because the USB is the rear and there is also a small triangle pointing to the front. Now take all of these cables and thread them through the plate. You may notice that I've added a red and black wire to this setup. This is just directly soldered onto the power distribution board so it can have power up on the top plate for anything, for example, a video transmitter or camera. Now let's add these locking bolts to all these screws. This will help keep it all together. Once you've done that we can add our motors. It's important to take notice of the rotation. You can see this on the back. Using the screws provided, screw the motors onto the arms using a 2.5mm hex. Once all four motors are done, it should look something like this. It's time to connect our motors to the ESCs. Before doing so, add a bit of heat shrink to each one of the wires. Now solder the motor wires to the ESC wires. Don't worry about which wire goes where, because we can sort this out later. Repeat the process for all four motors. Then pull heat shrink over the exposed solder areas. Now let's plug in our receiver. Inside the bag with the flight controller you will find this cable. Take this red, black and white servo connection and add it to channel 1 on your receiver. Take note which way these wires go into your receiver. Then go along the cable, adding each one of these coloured signal cables into your receiver. You can now power up the quad and bind your receiver to your radio. Now it's time to program the flight controller. There's a link in the description to the OpenPilot software. Plug a USB mini into the flight controller and then into your computer. Now launch the OpenPilot software. You're going to want to click on Setup Wizard. Make sure you have no propellers on the machine at the time. Then click Next and Upgrade. Once the upgrade is complete, click Next. Then choose your receiver type. We're going to select PWM. Then select Next. 
because we're building a quad we will select multi-rotor and go to next. Here you can see which way the propellers are going to need to spin. You can also see numbers 1 to 4. These are the numbers of the speed controller so you know where to plug them in on the CC3D. Select the rapid ESCs on the right hand side then select next. This screen is just a summary of what we've selected so far. If everything's correct click next. With the Nighthawk on a level surface click calculate. Now it's time to program the ESCs. It's important to follow these instructions carefully. If you've followed all of the instructions, select all of these boxes here. You'll see that start is now highlighted. You can now select start and connect the battery to your quadcopter. You will start to hear a series of beeps. Your ESCs are now calibrated and you can move to the next step. With the battery still plugged in, press start and then gently bring this slider up until the motor starts to spin. Once the motor starts to spin, check that it's rotating in the correct orientation. If it's the wrong way, swap any two of the ESC wires that you earlier soldered onto the motor. Once you're happy that the motor is spinning in the correct direction, press stop. Then click next and repeat the process for all of these motors. In this latest software, you can pre-select some initial setup tuning guides. Here I'm going to select the QAV250 because its setup is very similar to the Nighthawk. You can now click next and save. The last thing we need to do here is set up our radio. So ensure you have your radio on. In the radio setup wizard, click next. Choose acro on the top left and then next. I fly mode 2, so I've got that selected. Now move your throttle up and down. Then your ailerons left and right, the pitch up and down, and then your rudder left and right. Now choose which switch you're going to use the flight mode. It will ask you to do the accessories, but we're not going to use these, so just click next or skip. Once that's done, put all the sticks into the center and the flight mode switch into the center. Then press next. Now on your radio, move the sticks to their endpoints, so into the far corners. Do the same for the flight mode switch. This basically tells the flight controller the endpoints for each one of these channels. Now that's done, press next. You can now move your sticks around and check that they're moving in the right direction. If you find anything moving in the wrong direction, then you can click on one of the square boxes on the top. Here my throttle was reversed, so I clicked throttle at the top. Now it works correctly. Once you're satisfied that all the channels are moving the correct way, press next. Here you can select how you're going to arm the flight controller. Usually I do yaw to the right. I'm going to change the arming timeout to 5 seconds. This means if I do not throttle up after 5 seconds of arming, it will disarm. Now press save. There's plenty more advanced menus you can go through on this open software to enable different types of flight modes. But today we're just going to stick to the standard stabilized. So let's put the rest of the quad together and have a test fly. Here's the red and black cable that I mentioned earlier. This will sit here now until I need to power a video transmitter or camera. I've tidied up the ESC wires with some zip ties. So here's the maiden flight. So oh, she's flying well, time to strap on some FPV and really get flying. Before I go I just want to say a quick thank you to quadcopters.co.uk for sponsoring this video. 
Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.